Twilight by Dr. Rampa The Press April 1975 I have been listening to the tragedy of a nation, using my little old transistor radio, and I am just overcome by the tragedy of it all. Of course by the time you read this book the news will be old, possibly even the new president will have left. I should never be surprised nowadays. But I have been listening to the tragedy of a nation. The tragedy is not the doings of Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, I would say, is no saint, in fact I should imagine that he can grow horns on his head far more easily than he would grow wings on his shoulders, but Richard Nixon has done a lot of good, and to my way of thinking he has done no more harm than some of the other people who have been presidents of the USA. The tragedy of the USA is not the tragedy of the president, the tragedy is that the press, those evil dastardly men of the press, have caused all the trouble, and I cannot understand why presumably sane people tolerate the press. There should definitely be a press censorship, but to be crude about it none of the politicos have the guts to impose it or even to suggest it. I well know how the lying press can fabricate the evidence and then the press will accuse a person, try him, and condemn him without one iota of real guilt on the person concerned. I am not saying that President Nixon was innocent, not even the most potent of those wonderful cleaning powders which are so freely advertised would make President Nixon snow white, no matter how many times he was dunked in the stuff, but he was not as bad as he was painted by the press and I will go so far as to say that he has not done anything worse than any other president has done. I thoroughly understand President Nixon's point of view, and I should class him as a perfectly ordinary commonplace in the rut American president. The press have no right to interfere in politics any more than the churches have. It is always a source of amazement to me that in Ireland, for example, one Bible thumper has left his lectern, or flown the pulpit, to become one of the revolutionaries. What's the fellow's name? Paisley, I believe. But if a man goes in for holy orders why does he suddenly start giving revolutionary orders? You get the same thing with old Macarius who ran so fast from Cyprus that no one could catch him. He is another one, this time an archbishop and he forgot his holy teachings to enter the revolutionary path, and revolutionaries it seems to me, are nothing but a gang of murderers. We are all entitled to our opinions, and that is my opinion. I think that a cleric who forgets his holy teaching and runs bleeding from his flock to pick up a rifle should be unfrocked. Not merely should he be unfrocked, he should be debagged. Debag is a good old English term so for the American audience let me say that he should be peeled from inside his pants. I have had a lot of persecution by the press, and although I cannot truly say I hate anyone I am as near hating the press as I am anyone in the world. I would prefer to shake hands with Satan and his grandmother does Satan have a grandmother, than I would to shake hands with a pressman because these people are truly the scum of the earth. One listens to them on the radio and one shudders at the arrogant way in which they dictate to people, shudders at the manner in which they try to force a person to say what the pressman wants them to say. And then in the matter of the new incumbent, Gerald Ford, I listened to the pressman saying what the new president would do. Well, if the press people are so important, so all-knowing, then why does America need a president? Why doesn't the Senate or Congress or the Boy Scouts or something just phone the press each morning to know what orders they should give? The press people, it seems to me, are just a lot of illiterate, ignorant fools who are just ready to cash in on anyone's misery, and even on a nation's tragedy. Pox to the press!